Uh, first you get the <laughs> alcohol, and then... Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to do it this way, just so I can yeah. see it. Yeah, okay. That's like oh, man. Awesome. You good, Andy? Yeah, like this. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> click, click, and then you press, and then... Yep. You're my... You're oh, my the memories. Okay, I'm going to get yeah. right... I'm on sleeve duty. Our yeah. sleeves are ready. This is this bad, right? Yep. Semi ridges are ready for a load. Yeah. Okay, hey, this is the same as a beta, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice it's that same, same as yeah. beta. With the rare at the end. Yeah. Rare okay. at the end. So yeah. juice oh, in the front. Gosh. <laughs> All right. Oh my god. This you hate this right now. I'm crying on the inside. Oh. I don't feel good. Oh. 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 Yeah. Oh. That was an amazing event. It was great to see everybody again. Andy from Power 9 Quest was there, and he opened up an Alpha Booster Pack. That's amazing. Uh, when I was, uh, you know, starting to play back in the 90s, I never would have guessed that I would have the opportunity to see an Alpha anything opened. And there I was. Um, that's what we did. He opened it right up. So uh, we looked at it beforehand, shined a light through it to make sure that the corners were Alpha cards. And uh, it looked fine. Everything looks legit. Um, it was a little sun faded on the front, so maybe he got a kind of a deal on that, I hope. It's a good candidate for opening and not so much for grading. So uh, that's what we did. We opened it up. I looked at the, uh, the map while we were opening it. And uh, everything matches fine. Uh, it's totally legit pack, so no concerns at all there. Now, I didn't really film the whole opening because I, I had difficulty getting a good camera angle, as you probably just saw in the video there. But uh, Andy did have a question for me, and I had to think about it a bit. So I wanted to address his question in this video, so... Oh my gosh, dude. Please get a lightning bolt, sorry. Is that possible, Travis? I've never opened it a just lightning a bolt? lightning bolt. Yeah. yeah, you can get a lightning bolt in Alpha. No, I know, I mean, like, but the, the first card. Yeah, see, it's not... Oh. Hey, it's not a basic land. Oh, it's a healing sap. Oh. If you want to see the rest of that pack opening, you're going to have to check out Andy's video on Power9 Quest, or Rudy's video on Alpha Investments. Or check out both, why not? You can see all the different camera angles. Okay, so uh, Andy's question was whether or not Lightning Bolt could ever be the top card in the pile of commons when you open a pack. So when you, when you open the pack, the commons are facing you. Will Lightning Bolt ever be that top card? And, uh, you know, in my head, I thought, well, if I can figure out whether it's possible, then it's not much more work to figure out how frequently it happens. So I wanted to know, first of all, whether it's possible and how often it happens. So that's, that's the goal of this video here. Hopefully I can figure that out. You know, it's funny. Sometimes when you look at a puzzle from a different perspective, you can find a new way to arrive at a solution. So I was kind of hoping that that's what I would do here with this today. All right, so what we have here on the screen is a, a sheet of Magic the Gathering cards. It's 11 cards across and 11 cards tall. That's 121 cards total. That's pretty standard for Magic sheets before mid-96. Primarily, we're going to be talking about Alpha, Beta, Unlimited, and Revised today. Uh, Andy specifically asked about an Alpha Lightning Bolt. Uh, this particular sheet is a 4th edition rare sheet, but if it were an Alpha Common Sheet, Lightning Bolt would be in this position right here. And Lightning Bolt stayed in that position for Alpha, Beta, Unlimited, and Revised. Uh, for 4th edition, I think it was relocated somewhere else. But uh, I already happened to have this 4th edition image worked up, and I grabbed it because, it well, it was convenient. Okay, so this is a 4th edition sheet. Now, uh, when the cards go into the booster pack, we'll just pretend these are commons instead of rares. When the cards go into the booster pack, Let's say they start booster pack production, and this is the first sheet coming off the press, and it gets cut and goes into packs. All right, in the very first pack made, the top card is going to be this one right here in the corner. There's 11 cards in every pack, so 11 more cards down the sequence, 
And then the, the twelfth card will be the, the top card in the second booster pack. And basically we just repeat that through the card sequence. Every eleven cards is a pack, so the next card is the top card in the pack. So it should be pretty easy to see which card is going to be the top card in every pack. The issue is knowing where the rows were scooped up at. Now if you want to know more information on that, check out my uh, video on collation because it'll cover the basics of how all this works. The short version of the story is that every so often the rows get scooped up together into a pile and set aside. These lines here, normally I would use yellow, but these happen to be this bluish color. These lines here represent where the rows get scooped in this picture. The rows get scooped after every two, three, four, or five rows, but not necessarily in that order. It could be three, four, five, two, or, or some other combination of those four digits. That's the mystery part that I haven't figured out yet. So this particular picture, it's showing two, three, four, and five. You can see here that the, the section of five rows goes from this sheet, the first sheet, up into the second sheet because there's only 11 rows on the sheet and 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 is 14. If the pattern is 2, 3, 4, 5, then it repeats. So here we have another 2, 3, 4, and 5, which gets even further into the third sheet. 2, 3, 4, 5, 2, 3, 4, 5, 2, 3, 4, 5, 2, 3, 4, 5, 2, 3, 4, 5, 2, 3, 4, 5, 2, 3, 4, 5, you kind of get the drift here. All right, so that keeps going until you get to, this is, uh, Scoot down just a little bit there. Two, three, four, five. That's after 14 sheets. The next sheet after this sheet would start with two rows at the bottom, which is identical to this sheet way down here at the bottom. So basically what this tells us is that every 14 sheets, the pattern, two, three, four, five, is going to start over at uh, the same starting position. So that's the entire sequence of cards is 14 sheets. If you were to write it out, that's 1,694 cards before the cycle repeats. That's the whole sequence. That's how big the pattern is. Now the issue here is that we don't really know whether it's 2, 3, 4, 5, or 5, 4, 3, 2, or 4, 3, 5, 2, or some other combination of those four digits. We just know that it's those four digits and that it's in some sequence without repeating. Uh, that's controlled with the um, length of belts on the machine is how they set that. It, it is adjustable. So they could change it from print run to print run. So how many ways are there to arrange these four digits? Well, there's 24. You can see them here on the screen. One of these is the correct answer. I don't know which one, but it's one of them. Maybe we can narrow it down a little. If only every 12th card in the sequence can be the top common in a pack, then that might rule out some of these sequences as possibilities. By looking at pack opening videos, we can see which commons are in the top of each pack. So there's plenty of data out there to cross-reference with. 
Open Booster's Beta Booster Box opening videos are a pretty good source. The next step was to make a 14 sheet full sequence for each of those 24 possible number combinations. I did it in Excel for ease of use. So here we have these 11 cells by 11 cells. So this space represents a sheet. And if I go down the column here, probably go a little faster than what you can see. But if I go down the column here, there are 14 sheets in this column. Across the top and the bottom, I have labeled the numbers. So the, the 24 possible number combinations. This one is 2, 3, 4, 5, which shows two rows, three rows, four rows, and then five rows if you go on up. Uh, this one right here is 2, 3, 5, 4. So 2, 3, 5, and then 4. You get the picture. 2, 4, 5, 3. So moving across, we have the 24 different possible uh, number orders. Alright, so there we go. I have 24 different 14 sheet sequences. That's every possibility. Now the X is the first card in the pack. So that sheet position is going to be the first common in the pack. We have one here, one here, one here, here, and here. Uh, well, you get the picture. I'm just not going to keep saying here. So the X's are the first uh, common in the pack there. Now something interesting here is because the sheets are 11 rows across and there's 11 commons in a pack, this section of two rows contains two X's. And this section of three rows contains three X's. Four rows contains four X's. And if I move on up so you can see it, five rows contains five X's. Something else interesting is that the X's for all of the two sections are in the same place for all of the two sections on every sequence. So these cells look the same as these cells, which looks the same as these cells. That one might be off the screen for you. Anyway, every two row sequence has the X's in the same spot. And that holds true for every three row sequence, every four row sequence, and every five row sequence. Which made it pretty easy to make these uh, this chart here. So this thinner black line, that shows where the rows are scooped. I mean, that's probably obvious by now. Having all the information in front of me, the next thing I noticed was that this two, three, four, five sequence, this sheet, uh, one that was set up just like this, I noticed that I saw it in some of the other sequences. Here's what was going on. Two, three, four, five, repeating, is the same as three, four, five, two, repeating is the same as four, five, two, three, repeating, is the same as five, two, three, four, repeating. In the 14 sheet sequence, you can make them match just by moving the sheet from one end of the sequence to the other end of the sequence. This means that of the 24 possibilities, 18 of them are duplicates. And I really only need to look at the six sequences that start with the same number. It could be uh, all six that start with a two, all six that start with a three, all six that start with a four, or all six that start with a five. It doesn't really matter. I chose to do the ones that start with a two, just because they were at the beginning of my chart. 
Next, I went through each of these 14 sheet sequences, all six of them, and I added up how many times each sheet position had an X in it. So for this position right here, the bottom right corner, uh, here's one. Here's one. Sorry, that was off the screen there. This one, that's the second one. There's the third one. There's the fourth one. And that's it. So that sheet position has an X four times in this total sequence. So you could expect the card that's in that sheet position to appear four times every 1,694 cards, which is 154 booster packs, because each booster pack has 11 commons. It turns out that all six of those four-digit sequences have 11 copies of the two-row section, 11 copies of the three-row section, 11 copies of the four-row section, and 11 copies of the five-row section. They're all 14 sheets long, and they all have the same number of sections. So even though the collation order is different for each one, the totals come out the same for all six when you're looking at the whole sequence. So all six of them came up to a chart that looked like this. So this chart represents the number of times that the card in this sheet position would appear as the top common in a pack. Lightning Bolt is the fourth card from the left on the top row. So it's right here, this number one. So Lightning Bolt would appear as the top card in the booster pack every 154 booster packs, which is once in every 14 sheets. Now it is interesting that this column is fours, and this column is zeros, and these two columns are zeros. That seems to indicate that the cards in these columns can't be the top card in the booster pack on the, on the stack of commons. So that's pretty neat to know. The big problem with this is that it only holds true if the entire print run is perfectly smooth. If any number of cards are dropped, lost, removed for quality control, or mixed up, it will affect which common is the front card for all of the subsequent packs for the rest of the print run. Even something as innocent as packaging the starter decks before the booster packs could change the sequence starting position for the booster packs because this first card down here in the corner might not be the first card. Alpha, Beta, Unlimited starter decks have 45 commons, which doesn't divide evenly into 14 sheets, so they'd have a different sequence. What I'm saying here is that there's lots of ways that the sequence could get off during the course of the entire print run. Now when I'm mapping a sealed product, you know, a booster pack or a starter deck, we don't really run into that. But if you're looking at the entire print run, millions of cards, Somewhere in there, there's going to be a mistake. And for something like this, it's going to affect every sealed product that's made after the mistake occurs. Now, it won't affect the mapping at all because the cards will still be in sequence as far as the map is concerned. But if we're starting, say, here, instead of starting here, even though it doesn't affect the map, it does affect whether that card is on the top of the other commons in the booster pack or not. So if we have some mistakes appear uh, somewhere in the print run, you could totally see some things from this column appear. And heck, you might even see the lightning bolt appear more frequently or less frequently as the top common in the booster pack. 
Unfortunately, that didn't help us at all with figuring out which four-digit sequence was correct. But it did answer our question for whether Lightning Bolt can be the top card in the pack. It also showed us which other cards can be the top card in the pack and how frequently you can expect them to occur. Because of the high likelihood of a trough being switched around somewhere in the print run, you know, out of, out of order from the way it came off the press, then uh, I don't think I'm going to be relying on this chart too much. But uh, it did answer our question. It is possible to get the lightning bolt as the card. And, uh, you know, more importantly, we had a blast opening up that alpha booster pack. Hopefully you learned a few things about how collation works. It was neat to see that the sequence takes 14 sheets to repeat and how many cards are in the total sequence. Catch you next time.